Uh, next part. <laughs> Studying her face, darling could not see, see any resemblance to her or her mother. Her face was so much more slender than theirs. She, she did not have a little button nose. Instead, she had a long slender nose that rounded over a point to a point. Her cheekbones were extremely high and sunken in. However, her skin did look youthful for a woman of her age. Darlin finished her food first. As to not make anything awkward, she kept pouring and drinking water. When her grandmother finished her plate, she looked up at Darlin, then said, It was really nice to see you. We will have to have tea tomorrow in the garden, maybe around 3 o'clock. By then, you should have called your mother and figured out what exactly you're going to be doing. Darlin, very confused. Yes, it was very nice to see you too. I guess I will go back to my room now, in a questioningly kind of way. Darlin stood up and slid her chair in and started to walk towards the way she had come into the room. She got halfway across the white marble floor when she heard her grandmother cry out, What in the world are those? Darlin turned around, not knowing what, she, what or who she was talking to. What's what? Standing up, pushing her massive chair back with her legs, this time without the need of the midgets, she pointed with her narrow bony finger at Darlin's feet. Those atrocious things. Where did you get them? Why? They make you look like some kind of harlot pointing at Darlin's new shoes. Honestly, darling, to disgrace a national treasure such as the Wizard of Oz by turning your ruby slippers into stilettos is absolutely shameful. You look like a stripper. Oh, come on, they're not that bad, uh, pleaded darling. Well, where on earth did you get those? And who's been, where, like, who's been putting things like this into your head, persisted the now completely irate woman no one i seen them in a window downtown earlier today and thought they were cute explained darling what window what store i don't know it's a new one i never seen it before it's on boiler street I, but don't worry there's they're one of a kind i doubt you'll ever have to see them again responded darling as she continued to make her way back to the room god what a meanie. <coughs> the next morning, Darling awoke, startled by the sound of Benson's voice and arm shaking her. I'm awake, I'm awake, yelled Darling. The moment she figured out what was happening, Benson huffed. You were having a nightmare. Well, I'm awake now, Benson. You can let go. A quick thought came across her mind as she felt Benson's grip loosen. I wonder if Paris ever had to deal with this kind of second-rate help. As soon as Darlin rubbed the sleep out of her eyes, she felt an odd familiarity of her surroundings, in which she could not quite put a finger on. As she started to look around the room, she seemed to know where everything was, as if she had been through the entire room before. Benson was now standing tall above her bed, shaking his head with concern, stated, Girl, you had me scared. I just left my room and I was heading downstairs to get some photos of the grounds when I heard you yelling. I don't know what you're dreaming about. You kept yelling about an oil can. You shouldn't, you, you, you shouldn't scare people like that. Okay, okay, relax. Tell me, what what was I yelling? Questioned Darlin. Benson took a deep breath. You were crying it's in your sleep and... Crying and screaming in your sleep. Something about an oil can? And mentioning a, um, something about an oil can? What? Darlin thought, get out of here. 
trying to understand what exactly he was saying. She's like, I think you got yourself a case of castle fever. I don't know if it's just those new heels you bought or this spooky castle, but it seems to me you, you're thinking you, you're, uh, you're Darcy from the Wizard of Oz. By the time Benson finished telling her, he was standing on one leg with one knee up high and his hands over his face, laughing hysterically. Darling sharply interjected, I highly doubt that, and it's Dorothy, not Darcy. Benson replied, barreling over. Girl, I thought you were the Wizard of Oz. Had, 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 see, I don't know what this is. Something about a nightmare. As Darling started to get off the bed, she noticed a few little gold flicker flakes scattered across her body and the bed. She wondered where they had come from. She, the, from then snapped at at Benson. You got glitter all over me. What are you talking about? I ain't got no glitter. Don't be blaming me for that. You know, it's probably that stupid little dog of yours. She's always into something. A second later, Disco popped out from underneath the covers and barked. She too had glitter all over. Aw, what did you get into, Disco, darling asked. She could always melt it every time Darlin or Disco would get in trouble because she just made herself cuter and cuter. Come here, Disco. Darlin patted her on the patted her lap and replied with a few barks. Disco replied with a few barks and jumped into to Darlin's arms. She was then greeted with lots of huge hugs and kisses. While still adoring Disco, she asked Benson, what time is it? Benson rolled his sleeve up as he was wearing a watch. It's, still ch it's about 12.30. Oh, my. What time is, did my grandmother say I was supposed to... I can't remember what time. Benson replied, I believe that she wanted you to go to the back near the pool for 3, 3 p.m. Well, I'm going to have a shower and order some breakfast. What were you saying you were going to do? Asked Darlin. I'm going to take some pictures of those awesome hedges out front. I'll catch up with you later on. Okay, Darlin responded. See you then. Thanks, Benson. Don't get yourself in any trouble. Darlin got up and to look for Disco's food but could not find any. She then walked over to the fireplace and hit the, the intercom button. Moments later, Thurston responded. Yes, Miss Darlin? What would you like? I can't seem to find Disco's food. Do you know where they would, ha where it would be? She asked. The boys are kind of busy right now, but I'll tell you what, I'll send some breakfast up for you and your little dog too. There is, is there anything particular that you would like to eat this morning? Belgian waffles, whipped cream, fresh strawberries on top, and maybe two sausages, replied Darling. Thurston replied, I'll have the chef make it up immediately. As Darling momentarily took a drink of Coke, uh, took one more look around the room for the dog food that she seemed to be reminded of her familiarity with the room. She opened a drawer on a buff buffet and already knew that it contained a couple of silver candlesticks. She must have did some sleepwalking last night. She had been known to sleepwalk, but she had been known to sleepwalk, but not for many years. Chalking it up to nonsense, she quickly shrugged it off as more weird behavior she had been experienced the last couple days. The closest, the closed drawer, she closed the drawer and started, start to, start, started to chuckle to herself about her Wizard of Oz dreams. She had yes, last, yesterday at school as well as this morning. A few minutes later, she was lost in deep thought. 
but this time it was over choosing what to wear. She picked out a few articles of clothing designed by one of her favorite designers, who also happened to be a personal friend of hers, Cleo. Cleo had just released a new hip line of pixie wear and Darlin loved to to be in full fashion. So she, she went uh, and got the production line before it was released to the public. Darlin chose two skirts, one with purple, one with green, and the other purple skirt was long on one side and came to a point, just touched the floor. The other side of the skirt, it was so it was two layers of skirts. The skirt was designed in the shape of a leaf and the green, green skirt was the exact same and it came down only to her mid thigh. She wore one on top of the other, kind of like uh, Tink from Peter Pan. After selecting light green leggings, she chose a turquoise halter top and a string to tie up the back and completed her outfit with a pointed hoodie that started just below her arms and was dark purple and resembled a long pointed elf hat that went down her back. Smiling, now looking at her outfit laid out on the bed, Darlin decided to call her mother again. She still had no idea what her plans were and did not find her grandmother very helpful last night at dinner. After a voice came, after a voicemail came up again. Oh, there was something missing there. She dialed the phone and voicemail came up again. Darlin slammed the phone down to, and began to cry. She could cry now that she was all alone. Her mother had always instilled in her that crying was for babies and that people looked down on people that showed signs of weakness. Darling collapsed crying down onto the bed and wondering, wondered to herself whether her mom even remembered or if she would even bother to call this time. Gaining a little strength now, Darlin wiped her eyes dry and began to look at the old paintings of her mother. After spending the last night alone with her grandmother, Darlin could see that her mother or her did not possess any of her grandmother's hideous characteristics. After thinking, thanking God for that fact, Darlin walked into her bathroom. The bathroom floor was warm due to the in-floor in heating. The bathroom itself was completely white fixtures. Everything was white. The only thing that had any color was a red antique bathtub and an old cast iron kind with uh, clawed feet. Throughout the bathrooms, bathroom walls were exhaust vents which turned the entire bathroom into a steam room. Pondering it for a minute, Darlin turned on the steam and shut the glass door. Since her food was on the way, she was kind of hungry and would eat breakfast while the steam built up. Her mother always stressed the importance of steam and how it kept her youthful and healthy. Darling recalled her last steam bath she had at her mother's house in Beverly Hills and the trouble her and Willow got in for leaving the steam bath running with the door open. The steam had soaked the entire top floor to the, the house and she remembered her mom yelling and I don't know what that word is to make sure the glass door. So she checked the glass door to make sure that it was closed securely. She knew her mother was mean, but her grandmother, she did not want to deal with. When she turned around, she could see Disco barking at the bookcase. She was sitting pretty as she always did when she wanted something. You're so weird, Disco. Come here, girl. Disco responded with a few more barks at the bookcase then happily met Darlin on the bed as the two of them sat down engaged in cuddles her sadness drifted away she thought to herself to deal with her mother's selfishness 
She had taught herself to deal with her mother's selfishness. When alone, Darlin often wished she could just be a normal average for kid with normal average parents. If she had one wish, it would be a mother who truly loved her. She would give up all the fame and fortune associated with her grandmother's money to have a real relationship with a real parent, with a real parent. Suddenly there was a mid uh, mild knock on the door followed by a door, the door opening and a cart that seemed to magically roll in to the center of the room by itself. From behind the cart, a soft voice, breakfast is served. As Darlin stood up from the bed, she could now see the little man who was just a few inches shorter than the cart. Thank you, that will be all, said Darlin as she headed for the cart. The little man left the room, closing the door behind her. Mmm, she thought, mm, that smells good, eh, Disco? She then lifted up the cover of her breakfast. She, she and began to tease Disco as she looked through the food, holding Disco in her arms, saying, I wonder which one is for you. You don't like sausages, do you, huh? Ah, Disco barked twice. Does Disco want some eggs and bakey? Tease darling. Disco barking frantically. Barking frantically. Nah, nah. Now had made her uh, now had made her choice. Darling put Disco on and the plate of sausages and bacon down on the floor with Disco. Then she gathered the tray, which contained the waffles and fruits and pancakes, and walked over to the small table beside the bookshelf. Explosions of flavor filled her mouth with the exotic fruit. She, as she got up to get juice from the cart, she felt a cool breeze go across her neck. When she turned to see where the breeze was coming from, she noticed in her peripheral vision a copy of the wizard of a book, The Wizard of Oz, which looked like it must have been a hundred years old. Shaking her head, thinking about coincidences over the last couple days, she made her way back to the cart. As she sat down with her juice, she felt the breeze again, then noticed Disco wasn't eating, which was very strange for her. Disco loved people food. Instead, she was sitting pretty, staring at the bookcase. Darling, coaxed Disco, eat your food, it's going to get cold. Disco remained uninterested, not thinking anything much more about it. Darling finished her, her juice and got her food and got undressed and went into the steam room, leaving Disco to stare at the bookcase. By the time Darling went into the bathroom, she could hardly see her hands when in front of her face. The steam was so hot and thick she could only last a few minutes before she had to turn on the exhaust button. Within seconds, the steam was sucked out of the bathroom and returned to a more tolerating temperature. After brushing her teeth and doing her hair, she emerged from the bathroom and dressed and got dressed. She got ready and could see that Disco had not moved. She began to wonder, why is Disco acting this way? Still sitting pretty, staring at the bookcase, but now with a slight whimper. Once Darlin was completely dressed, she decided to go investigate Disco. To investigate Disco. Then grabbed her to go outside to do her business. When she went over to Disco, for some reason... She noticed that Disco was staring at the book. She reached for it and tried to remove it. She, she was startled by the combination of a bookcase rising upward in front of her and revealing a secret passage that sounded and sound the fire made on the other side of the room due to the new oxygen that received from the secret passage. 
turning back to the bookcase or the secret passage or the now secret passageway where the bookcase was, Darla could see Disco rather curiously run into the passage. Disco looked back and barked her Darla to follow her. Wow, Benson would have loved this, she thought. When, without hesitation, Darlin followed Disco into the dark tunnel. Within a few steps, she found a torch on the wall. She removed it from its black metal housing and went back to the room and lit it on the fireplace. Upon returning to the well with the well-lit torch, Darlin could now see into the tunnel. The passage was made of the same stone as the rest of the castle. She chuckled at the thought of, of the Harry Potter moment she was experiencing. Where does this lead, she thought. What will I find? Then, where's Disco? These were all questions racing through her mind. As she walked, she could see the passage was very narrow and had a rounded ceiling. There was more small exhaust holes with metal bars every few feet or so. It was not long before she arrived at a split tunnel. She called out, Disco! Disco! Quickly she realized when Disco barked back that she had took the passage on the right. That looked sort of like stairs going up. Darlin followed them. However, once she started going up, she realized that instead of stairs to walk up, there were stones spaced out every couple feet. The stone, the small stones reminded her uh, of indoor rock climbing nubs she had used before. She had taken a, a weekend class with one of her other friends, Willow, who was only there because of a boy. Willow lived back in Hollywood and they would have been best friends there the whole, the whole life. Every time they, they were best friends back there her whole life. Every time Darlin visited home, she would hang with Willow. Darlin ran up to the makeshift, ran up the makeshift stairs and arrived at what must have been the next floor of the castle. As she walked along the passage, she came to, up to what looked like a little observation station. There was a small red Indian rug with brown tassels. Bolted to the wall was one of the fold-down seats that covered, covered with red leather held on by a row of gold decorative tacks that, you, that people use to upholster really old wing-back chairs. Across from the chair was a window or what Darwin came to realize a second later when a man came into her view to clean, clean the window with Windex on the other side. But he did not see her. Startled at first, but quickly she realized that it was a two-way mirror, or one-way mirror, whatever. It says a two-way, but I don't know. The man stood looking at himself on the other side. Darlin stood there and made a few faces at the man, knowing that he could not see her. She mimicked every, every facial expression he was ma look, making as he cleaned the window. The man wore a John Lennon spectacles and had bright orange hair that reminded her of Wesley. Of, no, of, of Ron Weasley. His hair came to a point, sort of like a frohawk. With a white lab coat on, he looked like a red Q-tip. He was very tall and thin, like the purple pie man from the Strawberry Shortcake series. When the orange-haired man stared, started to pick his nose, Darwin turned away in disgust and continued down the narrow tunnel. After traveling it for a hundred feet or so, she felt it secure enough to yell out, Disco! Disco without having uh I don't even know what that say that's like literally a thirty letter word. Like I can't decipher that. So she called out again. Disco as she continued down the tunnel. See the problem is I wrote this on a Mac and then I emailed it to someone on a non Mac and then and I got this laptop. It's just like so now it's like just 
no punctuation and some shits fused together so just bear with me if you want uh, as she continued down the tunnel she it, she noticed it started to widen there was a small table with five chairs around it on one of the tables there was an old deck of cards a few beer bottles hmm she thought this must be where those little guys go to get away from grandma miss no fun allowed miss oh from her grandmother miss no fun allowed always breathing down their necks darling began to pick up her pace as she walked through the room continuing down the passage occasionally noticing other other two-way mirrors the room quickly sloped back into a narrow passageway and it was before like it was before it widened she began to pick up her pace and called out disco standing at the other end another fork in the road she lowered the torch towards the floor thinking that maybe she would see some footprints of disco or any indication of which way she went the slight draft of the exhaust pipes up on the ceiling of the tunnel to the left little or no trace of the dog's prints this this fork in the road was a little different than the last for it had three paths darling did not know what to do decided to take the far one on the far left then worked her way to the right then she would work her way to the right. She walked down the tunnel and after about 20 feet, she noticed the floor had changed from stone to metal. It was, it was a dead end. Just as she turned around, the metal gate dropped in front of her. Suddenly, she could feel the floor raise. At first, quite scared, she soon realized that it was some kind of slow-moving elevator. From her judgment, she wasn't sure how high she had risen, but it felt like she was riding in that elevator for quite a long time. Thinking about Disco and getting back to her, the elevator came to an abrupt stop with a loud clanking sound, scaring Darlin once again. Seconds later, the wall slid sideways, revealing another room. It revealed that she was not trapped anymore. She stepped off the elevator into the room the 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 room itself was completely round and about 25 feet in diameter no need f no, not needing the torch anymore she went back onto the elevator and placed it in the same type of housing unit that she had got it from outside her room inside the room there was a a wooden floor matched entirely with wooden bookshelves that completely surrounded the entire room. So it's like a round room with all books going around. Except for a small space for a desk near a window. Not seeing any other way out, she went to climb onto the desk to look outside the window. When she made it on top of the desk, she looked out the window... And outside the window, she could see the other four towers below her. Right then, she concluded that she was at the tallest of the five towers. Feeling like Rapunzel, <coughs> she thought to herself, even if she broke this window and screamed for help, no one would be able to hear her. I guess that isn't Rapunzel, is it? I don't know. Who the hell was in the tower? I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. Thus the effectiveness, I might have got that one wrong, of the castle, thus the effectiveness, is, effectiveness of a castle tower. What a breath, breathtaking view. She looked past the castle's outer walls and she could see fields upon fields of corn and mustard seeds, which lit up the landscape in patches of golden green. When she took a step back out of the corner of her eye, the top of the bookshelf was an oil can. Stunned by this coincidence once again, at first she took another step back, almost falling backwards off the desk. Once she acquired her footing, she quickly concluded that it was just chance again and she was going driving herself crazy. 
thinking it had something to do with her dream. Looking over to the other side, she noticed that there was a rolled up blueprints. Looking past the following, the entire bookshelf, all the way around her eyes came to rest on the oil can. Okay, so basically she just went around the room looking, then back to the oil can. It's hard with it. After partially unrolling some sort of blueprint on the... After partially unrolling some sort of blueprint of a rocket and putting it back beside where the old books on the shelf were, she could see a collection of old Hudson Bay catalogs dating back as far as 1864. She reached her hand through the ladder and pulled out one of the books. It was a 1920 catalog. Inside, she could see and noticed that you see she could see that you could buy entire houses back then for 1500 to 2000 dollars also notice that department stores sold cars for 500 dollars flipping through the fashion area she got a kick of the clothing items that that would only cost pennies at the time she climbed off the desks still reading the catalog, and felt a pull on her leg. On the le Pull on the leaf of her skirt, stopping her from walking. She turned around to see that it had gotten caught up in a drawer. She must have had it closed. She must have closed the door when she had climbed up. Darlin went to pull the door free from her skirt and realized it was locked. Great, now she was trapped. <coughs> Where the heck are the keys? Pulling on all the drawers frantically to find the keys, she, she did not want to rip her new skirt. She began to look around the room. She placed the book down on the desk and seen a key hanging on a nail at the top far side of the ladder. The ladder was one of those kind that are anchored to a rail at the top of the bookshelf it also had another track on the floor that the ladder would circle a room and in the middle of the room was an orange rug very similar sim bell road oh very similar to the the ladder in the moon in the uh, the Disney movie from Beauty and the Beast. Darling climbed carefully up the ladder and reached for the skeleton key. And, and felt her skirt tear a bit. Ever skid, she thought. Really, I love that skirt. Well, while still on the ladder, she reached down to pull her skirt up to examine it it wasn't it wasn't that bad it only caught the very tip and even though it was only the tip it was enough to drive darling crazy she hated frayed fabrics she had not got nothing but the breast her whole life so she, this was a habit that was forced in her she must she was thinking there must be a pair of scissors in this desk so she continued to grab the key it was an old desk that looked like it might have had several hundred years old. It was quite decorative. With four drawers on either side and a thin drawer in the middle. She could hear, she could see her skirt tip still hanging out of the top one. 